I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. Once more, the voice of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church is coming to you. I'm Bob Jones, along with organist David Berry and singer and reader Kathy Berry and operator Stephen McKay. We hope that whatever your situation today, the next few minutes will bring you a blessing. And now a prayer. Eternal God, faithful in your tender compassion, you bring us hope for our life here and hereafter through the victory of Jesus Christ. Revive in us the joy of this everlasting gift. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And now Kathy with the reading and some music. I am reading from the Epistle to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 8, the New International Version. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, although for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. The hymn I am going to sing is called, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. Joy. 
In the psalm for today, there is a verse that caught my attention. Perhaps you have wondered about it too. From Psalm 116, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. God, give us a clear vision of the truth, faith in your power, and a confident assurance of your love. Amen. In the midst of life, with all of its beauty, enjoyment, and excitement, and some sadness, there are times when death intervenes. In 1965, I preached a few sermons during the summer in another St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, St. Andrew's in Moncton. Lawrence Blakey, the father of Doug, was the minister there. And I remember at my tender age at that time, I preached on death. I realized, as I thought about it after, that most of that congregation were older than I, and here was I being an expert on the subject of death. And now, 55 years later, I can imagine that most of my congregation are younger than I. But here I am with some thoughts that come at the tender old age of 89. Yes, there is a part of life where suddenly, unexpected, death comes. It might be someone close to you or someone you've never met, but whose passing shocks you and possibly the whole world. Someone like George Floyd, I can't breathe. George Floyd, who didn't deserve to die. Or perhaps Chantel Moore, a young mother who didn't deserve to die. At these times, you are reminded of the uncertainty of life. Now, some people would say, well, uh, death is the absolute end, like a flower that blossoms and then fades and dies. They compare it with a flower. But still you wonder, because a person is not exactly like a flower. And sometimes we are left to wonder what lies beyond death. A simple, straightforward answer would be in the concluding words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. The church has always believed it, recited it Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. It was planted deep within the soul of the church member. But the younger generation tends to reject almost anything that the older generation believes, especially when it comes to religion and a subject like death. Whatever our age or stage of life, this question persists, especially when a friend or a loved one dies. Then we think, what do I really believe about life after death? What do you think will happen to people after death will depend on what you think of people before death. If you think of some of the petty, miserable, heartless people you have known, then you will decide that it's just as well to bring the story to an end. But if you think of the people you have known who are alive, kind, compassionate, honest about their weaknesses, courageous, lovable, when you think of people like that, 
you will find it almost impossible to think of them as terminated. Always bearing in mind a couplet which I discovered some years ago attributed to James Truslow Adams, also attributed to Martin Luther King Jr., Edgar Cayce, Robert Louis Stevenson, Albert Hubbard, and a few others. But it's so profound that as I read it, I thought I heard a voice from heaven saying, I thought of it first. This is the rhyme. There is so much good in the worst of us and so much bad in the best of us that it ill behooves any of us to find fault with the rest of us. The bottom line in all this, I suppose, is that it really depends on what you think about God. Theodore Parker Ferris, you've heard me mention his name before, he is my long deceased mentor, died in 1972 at the age of 63, a victim of cancer. He wrote one time, I don't know much about God who brought me into this world. I knew nothing about it before I got here. It's been difficult, painful at times, but there have been those times when I've had a glimpse of heaven, aware of something other than this world of time and space, something breaking in upon me when God has given me the strength to go on. So he continues, if God brought me into this world when I was born and kept me in it as long as I lived, I trust God to take me into another world when I die. I know nothing about it. The metaphors in the Gospel of John certainly help. All I know is that if it is half as good as the world he brought me into here, I will be satisfied. I leave it in his hands. And now a prayer. Guide us, O God, as we deal with confusing thoughts about death and look for the larger life of the world to come. And now, as we pray the Lord's Prayer, this time in music, let us remember all who are standing in the need of prayer and in our own prayers, those whose burdens that are too deep for words. Pray with us now as Kathy sings. I'm going to invite you to join me at home with uh, hymn number 831, Our Father Who Art in Heaven. Uh, many of you know this by heart and would ask you to sing corporately that we may sing the Lord's Prayer together. the 
And so I leave you with these words in times of sadness, perhaps even times of despair. Remember that you are in God's hands. And so until next time, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Amen.